since 1952, Celtics fan, basketball fans everywhere have heard play-by-play -play this way. Bird pops out, gets it on the sideline, goes baseline, throws it up, and it's oh! Larry Bird did it again! He did it again! Oh, my goodness! He did it again! <laughs> well, in that lack of enthusiasm, Johnny Most, the voice of the Boston Celtics, along with his broadcast partner, Mr. Glenn Ordway, join us this morning to talk about the Celtics and, I suppose, ineluctably, the Lakers, as well as their new venture, which is called Fiddle Diddle Sports Fantasy Tapes, which we're going to hear. I can imagine where they got that sound. And we welcome you two. Yes, John, good to, to have you here. Good I think he's going to be surprised when he hears it. He is going to be surprised because we have got a fantasy tape for you later on. Oh, Tom I understand. Huh? I, well, I don't know what it's going to be. All right, had a couple days now to recover from the other night. How do you both Yeah, that feel? wasn't enough. No. <laughs> no, no. How do you feel? What I'm still playing this thing over in my mind and figuring how, you know, we, we might have done it differently to win it, you know, you know what happened and so forth. It's, it's something that's going to live with the guys more than with me uh, all summer long because they don't really feel that there's anybody better than they are. I mean, you know, it's not arrogance. I'm talking about it's self-confidence. They have that, and they have that feeling that they should have won, and that, uh, you know, this shouldn't have happened. And uh, uh, they're going to live with that uh, the rest of the summer. And, 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 and you've got people like Bird who, are, who, are, who at, will actually analyze why it may have happened, he'll put all the blame on himself. That's but the no kind excuses. of kid he is. No excuses from excuse. Larry Bird. No, no, no absolutely not. And that was I was proud of See, that. See, I'm, I'm, I'm remembering back to last year when, when the tables were turned, okay, when the Celtics won and the Lakers lost. And uh, I heard all kinds of things like uh, migraine headaches and uh, uh, too much heat in the garden. And, of course, they, they didn't turn the heat off for the Celtics, <laughs> you know, I mean. But it, it was a little hotter at one end of yeah, the floor, but, John. <laughs> <laughs> but, and uh, then uh, a fire alarm that went off in the, in the hotel. I heard all kinds of these things, but Bird will not give anything no. as an excuse. No. And I can tell you right now, this guy's arm is like a, like a piece of raw meat in a, in a sense, you know, because it's, yeah. he, He's, he's incredible. I mean, he plays with all kinds of pain. And, you can uh, tell the way he was shooting free throws. Yeah. That he's just incredible. What's it like working with this man, Glenn? Well, I thought he set the fire alarm in the Lakers <laughs> Hotel last year. Matter of fact, the first night they came in this year, there was another fire alarm, and I called John, and I said, good work. You're really at it again. <laughs> what is it like uh, working It's John? interesting. Uh, John is very, very unique in that he's very unpredictable. You never know what's going to happen. I think the first couple of years, and this is the fourth year I've worked with him, the first couple of years were a little bit difficult in that, you know, it was a matter of getting to know each other. John's been in the business so long. He has his set ways. I think the last couple of years have been great for me. Listen, and now we, we know what each other are, are doing, and we start to work off of each other. John, uh, John, well, John like is predictable, though, when it comes to Dan Issel and those <laughs> kind of people. You are predictable. Listen, wait a second. You guys, there's something, a very important moment that comes in game, what is it, game four, when it's two apiece. We've got a little piece of that tape on how you guys were feeling and calling that particular game. Here's, here's the recent playoff, Celts and Lakers, where it really looked like the Celtics are now back in stride. Yeah. Here's most in Ordway. 15 seconds. All right, Magic guarding DJ. All right now, there's a double stack, and Larry walks through the lane, coming to the right. And he gets the pass. Goes into the lane. Jump pass back out to DJ. DJ throws up. It's gone! It's gone! And no time left! It's all over! It is all over! And it's gone by DJ from the left side! It's all over! Boston wins the all-important fourth game! <laughs> Who won that time. game, John? <laughs> <laughs> what happened? <laughs> you do get a bit excited, don't you? Just a little bit. Just yeah. a wee bit excited. But of course, uh, that a lot of people have asked me if I, you know, if I if I if I do that like meticulously planned and uh, you know, I'm, a trigger goes off and I that's part of a script. It isn't. Because I our uh, way of I, I've always worked is just let it all hang out. I mean, if you're emotional, be emotional. Yeah. Don't try to stop it. And uh, and I'm a very emotional person, and when uh, the emotion gets provoked, th that's the result. You know, you had a stroke <clears throat> two years ago. Was it two years ago? Yeah, in February of, uh, of 83. How are you doing? 
pretty good. Uh, I still get pimples, you know, I still chase girls. <laughs> <laughs> in, in that order? <laughs> but nothing seems to hold you down. Uh, well, I get tired perhaps a little bit more than I did before, and uh, I have to obey the rules a little bit more. The rules being eight hours sleep a night. You know, yeah. I don't always get the eight hours, but I'm I'm pretty close all the time, and I try. I'm I'm, I'm fairly meticulous about that. That's if I go to bed at four o'clock in the morning, I get up at noon, That's so I good. get the eight hours. Yeah. Glenn and John, I'd be curious to know: Do you feel that the press covers? that they shouldn't cover the personal lives of the Celtics or the men that play the game, but do you feel that their personal worlds get full enough attention? They might have a problem. They might be going through a divorce. If someone might have well, died. That might affect their game. Should we think, know about yeah, that? Yeah, but I don't think the players want that exercised in the media. I think there's been some real problems in the last couple of years. Absolutely. A couple of paternity suits right. in which the newspapers picked up, but they smartly picked it up in the news section and not the sports section, mm. which is... Right. I went through a divorce. Place. I went through a divorce... Uh, a divorce action, and I think that uh, some of the members of the media were very kind to me because I asked them to be. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm close you know, to you threatened everybody to in the business, <laughs> mm -hmm. and I, I asked them to be. I said, uh, hey, I'm going through this, lay off it if you can. And if, and if you notice uh, somebody within your organization has a story and relative to that, see if you can squash it for me. And most of the guys were very, very cooperative. So they really think, helped me. You think the but that's because I'm a, be I'm a colleague, you know. Mm. But however, some of the people in the press, in the media, get the impression that a big story is a big story. No matter and what. The, and the hell with the, with, with the personality involved, and the hell with the ramifications. Yeah. And I'm thinking about the ramifications of some of these domestic squabbles that they have on the children involved. Mm -hmm. There are children involved, and that's what you've got to think of. Uh, All right, speaking of children, John, fiddle faddle. You want to talk about the fantasy tapes? Oh, fiddle diddle. Fiddle diddle. Fiddle faddle. 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 What do I give this guy for his birthday? I mean, he's got everything, you know? Well, that's, you know, he might be a sports fan, and he might have dreamed that he was the guy that stole the ball, not Johnny Havlicek. Uh, right. And uh, he has this fantasy all those years. And uh, so he, you give him something like that, and uh, suddenly he's the big hero that we all talked about for the last Let's 20 years. Let's show you what John's talking about, can we? We have uh, Tom Cottle on tape. Well, all right, this all is right, here's the picture. Watch. 28 seconds left in Game 7 of the NBA Championship. The Celtics trail the Los Angeles Lakers by one. It's 117-116, and the Lakers have the ball. Yeah, things are not looking great for the Celtics right now, John. They have to get the ball back. Tom Cottle is coming back into the game right now after a quick minute-and-a-half breather, and Cottle really has been the offensive story for the Celtics today. 32 <laughs> points, 11 rebounds, and 10 assists. All right, quickly the pass goes to Magic. You know he's not going to rush a bad shot. All right, Magic takes it outside. 25 seconds left. Magic is fiddling and diddling outside. He's got the clock down to 21. Magic going to the right now to Worthy. Worthy goes into the lane, throws it up. It's no good. The rebound comes out to Kareem, and Cottle steals it. Cottle just struck it down towards the bird. Back to DJ. Over to Cottle. They go about six minutes uh, long, but that was an abbreviated. That is now, how do people get these if they want? They, want they can call them. a phone number, 826 6999, and they will hear John's dulcet tones <laughs> doing right. a, a small fantasy tape. And then all they have to do is leave a name and phone number and address, and we'll send them out a brochure and a questionnaire because each one of them is sure, personal. It's it's well, we, we had one that was absolutely precious that uh, came through. The, some guy was being roasted in Connecticut, and so his buddies. 
who were, who were planning the roast <laughs> wanted to do a, a, a fantasy tape, and they heard about that, and so they called us up, and they, they ordered, it was like a little package, tailor-made, okay? And it was the Colgate Deeks versus the Skidmore somebody or other. And <laughs> Dolly Parton That's was playing for Skidmore. Yeah. Yeah. We have Thanks, to take this John. break. We thank you both for coming. Thank you, Glenn. Great to have you here. Good health to both Thank of you, Glenn.